Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I confess when I assumed this responsibility as president of the county council, I did not think I'd be spending my time talking about the president of the United States of America and the actions that are being taken that have been so impactful for so many in our community and beyond, of course. But do know this, that our county is going to uphold the values that have been near and dear to the core of Montgomery County for many, many years. And we are going to do whatever it takes to ensure that our communities do not get ripped apart, that everyone knows that they are welcome here in Montgomery County, and that we are going to fight for the Montgomery County that is so critically important to us. We're working on a joint statement with the county executive that will be issued later today to affirm to our immigrant community that Montgomery County is going to do it the same way we have done it. And the way we have done it in the past is to ensure that public safety is number one. We have a great, great police chief. And when our police chief says, this is the way I need to do my business to ensure that I have the confidence of the community and I'm able to maintain public safety, I defer to my police chief. This isn't about politics. This is about what it takes to keep a community safe and to have people have confidence in our police. So we do cooperate with ICE when we have criminal matters, and we don't knock on, we don't ask people whether they are, their status, if stopped for a traffic ticket. That's not how we do our business. That's not how we will do our business. So we'll continue to do our business the same way. I will say that the last executive order with respect to the ban on Muslims coming into our country from these seven countries is just so beyond the pale. It is hard to comprehend. And that we have to spend our time going to our communities and saying, we honor you, we respect you, we are grateful for your being here and for your contribution to our community. And that is what is true. On Saturday, I was with our Asian community, and on Sunday night, I was with our Indian Asian community. It is our diversity that makes Montgomery County a new world community. We have 170 cultures in Montgomery County, and we are proud of it, and we thrive as a result of it. In a couple of weeks, we will be having a program before our full council that I've asked to be put together that shows how Montgomery County does this work, how we, for example, combat hate crimes and extremism. And the Montgomery County model is a model for the nation and for the world. Our efforts in this regard have been lauded by law enforcement officers at every level. And so what I hope to do is to demonstrate that the way we do our business in Montgomery County is the way this work ought to be done wherever you are. So I can't tell you how distressing it has been for all of us. We are in a place where none of us thought we'd ever be. It is a new reality. And it is not a good one. So I feel strongly, I know every one of my colleagues feel strongly about this. I know the county executive feels strongly about this. So we will continue to be having conversations about all the efforts that we will need to undertake in order to ensure that the fabric of our community is not torn apart. It will not happen here. Okay, let's move on to something else, all right? And we can, we can have more questions on that if appropriate. What else did we have to talk about today? Actually, we were going to also talk a little bit about the fire that took place at our resource recovery facility. We will have a joint council briefing on that before the Public Safety Committee and the Transportation Infrastructure, Energy, and Environment Committee on Thursday. I have met with the operators of that plant and the operators of that plant will tell you in all honesty that they dropped the ball, that they did not make the kinds of needed investments and upgrades and repairs to the boilers that they should have. They will also say that fires do happen 
and we know that is true. Fires do happen at resource recovery facilities because people put things in their trash that actually probably shouldn't be put in their trash, like ashes from a fireplace that suddenly end up going up. So we've got issues to deal with there. We have an outside third-party consultant's report that uh, our Department of Environmental Protection will be sharing, uh, and we will be discussing how we can go forward and ensure that this resource recovery facility operates in the best interest of our county. We have an odd sort of contractual arrangement where we have a third party in between us and the operator, and I know that many of us are looking at that arrangement, which was appropriate at the time of construction and financing, but it isn't clear that it is appropriate today. We should probably have in legal terms, privity of contract with the provider of the service so that we can directly advise them as to the work they need to do. And they do have work they need to do. We have a, a bill that I am sponsored with respect to divestment. I've worked real hard on this bill because from day one I said that it, given all the work that our county has done on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and if you believe, as I do, and I know my colleagues do, that climate change is an existential threat to our planet, the notion that we are profiting from the very companies that are, in fact, creating climate change is something that I just think we should not be doing. And I think it's important that our retirees not suffer as a function of this action. So. I have amended this bill to make it crystal clear that their actions on divestment must be consistent with their fiduciary duty and that their fiduciary duty takes primacy. And if they cannot get rid of coal stocks and replace them with other stocks of equal or higher performance, then they make a report and say that their investment manager said they really can't do this. I would be disappointed if that were the case, but I am not going to ask those who are dependent on these retirement income to sacrifice at all in order to achieve this. We have a very high performing pension fund, and many of us are quite proud of that. But the reality is, in my judgment, that you can, in fact, do both. You can have a pension fund that is very high performing and honor the values that I think many of us hold that are very important, not profiting from the very companies that are threatening our planet. We had a great briefing before two of our committees last week on the New York City pre-K, universal pre-K model, which is really, it's a great model and all it takes is just a lot of money and the state provided a lot of that money, all of that money really, $850 million worth uh, and they have an excellent, excellent program. And the return on investment on these programs is what we really need to focus upon because the return on investment is quite high. If you get these kids in school early, that's your greatest opportunity to make a difference that lasts a lifetime. And so, to me, that's so terribly important to keep front of mind that it is the earlier, the better, and so we are asking our executive branch to come up with a plan that will allow us to see how could we advance this in Montgomery County. We know it's not inexpensive. We're not going to fool ourselves in that regard, but how could you phase it in over time? What is it that we could do that would have such a great return on investment? Why don't I stop there and open it up to your questions, comments? Otherwise. Could you tell us more about the model on hate crime, like what, what you've already looked at so far? Well, one, yes, we have an organization called WORD, W-O-R-D-E, that literally has developed a model, particularly on extremism, that is a model that is taken around the world because it really focuses on getting people who are susceptible to extremism back into community and working with them, avoiding the isolation that can be so critically important to an act of extremism. So that organization and our police chief and our faith communities have worked so terribly hard 
together. And now our school system, particularly with respect to hate crimes, is very much involved. So I feel like this is a model for the nation of how we address these issues without tearing communities apart. It's actually bringing our communities together, not tearing them apart, that ultimately is going to prevail in this effort. And the more we stoke fear and the more we, uh, you know, there are people more expert than I that have spoken out that these actions taken by the president actually make us more vulnerable, not safer. So we do it differently in Montgomery County and I'm proud of how we do it in Montgomery County. Yes, sir. With the news breaking uh, last night of the terrorism attack in the mosque in New York City, um, can you help but look at the Islamic community here in Montgomery County and what are your thoughts to them and uh, yes, guarantee that we can do all we can to protect them here? So what I can say to you is that our hearts go out to the Muslim community. The Muslim community in Montgomery County is a lovely community. Lovely spiritually, lovely engaged, contribute to our community on so many different levels. So that the notion that we are again feeding into this climate of hate is, stops here at our borders. And so we now have to do even more to make sure that all of our communities, I mean, the notion that the President of the United States could put out a Holocaust commemoration and not mention Jews in it, really? I mean, it's just, it's beyond the pale, what we have seen in just 10 days, okay? I'm a local official. And I am spending all my time now trying to figure out how can I hold our community together? How can the people that live here know that they are honored, respected, valued, and will be defended? And so it's, it's just, it's not okay. We are way beyond what is okay. I'm, I'm literally getting up in the morning, going online, trying to figure out, okay, what does happen next if this continues? And after 10 days. So. It's really, or someplace else, someplace we should never be. Your response to Governor Hogan's statements on, on the um, executive order, he said uh, the administration continues to support strengthened and more clarified vetting process for those entering the country. Improving our national security can and should be done in a defined and concise manner. And perhaps in a constitutional manner would help. I mean, really? When you have federal judges all across the country saying no, when you have an establishment clause in our Constitution that fundamentally says you cannot put one religious denomination above another, you cannot do that. It is fundamental to America. So, you know, I, I fully expect that these orders will, in fact, ultimately turn out to be unconstitutional and stopped. But the damage that is being done, imagine being a Muslim in this community. Imagine being a Hispanic member of the community, being an undocumented worker, and wondering what is gonna happen? Is somebody gonna swoop in and take my child? I mean, it's just unbearable. So, we in Montgomery County We'll do what we have to do. And we're going to begin having that conversation this week as to what we will need to do in order to make sure people know that if you are here in Montgomery County, we have your back. Any update on the minimum wage after the county executive veto last week? Well, again, what I. <coughs> My hope, my expectation is that we now are in a position to reset this conversation to get to yes. It has always been about getting to yes, but in a more balanced manner that actually takes this national movement and sculpts it to work for Montgomery County. It was never about we aren't gonna do more, we will do more. 
So my expectation is that the county executive has asked to do a study until July, that we will do that study, and that by the fall of this year, we will have a minimum wage law that we can approve that moves us forward. There, again, is no question that people are working too hard for too little. And it is also true that our small business community is petrified and telling us that they will lay people off, that they will shorten shifts, that they will stop providing certain benefits. So this is a double-edged sword, and it needs to be harmonized more carefully than the bill was that was presented to my colleagues and myself. So I believe we can find common ground on this issue. I'm going to be working with the county executive closely to find common ground on this issue. What do you and, make and we will. Just for a, what do you make of this proposal? Do you agree with, agree with what you wrote about why you vetoed the bill and what you want? Well, I certainly think that the heart <laughs> of it is how can we work better with our small business community? How can we make this palatable to our small business community? What do we need to do to protect small businesses in Montgomery County. We often say that small business is big business in Montgomery County. Well, if we believe that, then we really need to be attentive to their needs. I just met with a, a restaurant, an Ethiopian restaurant owner, and I asked him, minimum wage? He goes, Roger, it's too much. Too much. I mean, you have. So I think we will get to yes. I think we can chart a path forward that is appropriate for Montgomery County. You mean we as in the county, or you mean you want the state? Because you said you prefer. Oh, you know, one. we'd prefer this at the national level and prefer this at the statewide level. Absolutely. But we aren't, we will move forward on our own, but we will do it, I think, a little more carefully, a little more balanced than the bill that was before us. What about the state move? I think it's um, <coughs> Derek Davis has a, a bill that would preclude counties from acting on their own on minimum wage. What's your thought on that? We will fight that very hard. I went to Annapolis on, I go every Friday, and I spoke to our delegation on Friday and shared with them that we may be struggling to find the right answer for ourselves, but oh my goodness, we ought to have the right to find the answer for ourselves. It is, we are a higher cost community than the rest of the state. We ought to have the ability to take care of our people. Okay? So we may have an internal dispute as to what that looks like finally, but on the overarching issue of preemption, we want to be able to take care of our own. <clears throat> Spend a little bit more on the next steps for the implementation of the universal pre-K. Is this something that you will be looking at during the budget? Well, we need to first see a proposal mm -hmm. from the county executive, so we'll see what's in their budget with respect to it. But we have asked for a plan as to what that looks like. I can't prejudge. But obviously, we will be taking incremental steps along the way. This is way too expensive to adopt across the county as a whole. But so at least my focus is how can we do this in pieces, bite sizes, so that we can make more progress? Thank you. And if I could go back to um, the hate crime, you said that you, your heart goes out to the um, uh, Muslim community. Um, a number of parents have said that their students feel that they um, are uh, bullied or discriminated against in schools. Like they, as you may know, they released a petition saying, let's make schools hate free. Um, uh, could you comment on the fact that some students and their parents feel that hate is coming from in their own school? I think what you are seeing is, and I'm going to lay this on the president's doorstep, I think you had a campaign that was geared to hate. So it is not an accident that communities across the country are experiencing it. So it means that Jack Smith, who is an excellent superintendent, has to work harder to create, quote, hate-free zones. Really? That's what we're up now? That's what we're doing now, creating hate-free zones? I mean, I grew up in the 60s. So it was about love, not hate-free, right? I mean, this is, yeah. Um, so Jack Smith, I believe, will be at the briefing on the 14th. 
describing the work he's doing to ensure that hate crimes aren't committed in schools. Might the county council look at um, any effort specifically confronting Islamophobia in the future? We are going to be meeting with our executive branch, with my colleagues. Uh, I am open to any and all ideas as to how we can demonstrate that in Montgomery County, you are welcome, you are safe, you are respected, and we will have your back. I'm not aware. I, I, I can't recall, but my memory is so terrible. But so I, I don't remember a hate crime in the last 10 days. But I would say to you that the energy that has been unleashed here is really so damaging. And so it, it is not surprising that we've seen a rise in hate crimes across the country. There's been an unprecedented rise in hate crimes. There is a correlation here. <coughs> This is not happening in a vacuum. And in your judgment, or in talking with other colleagues within Montgomery County, um, I know you had mentioned earlier in the press briefing here, um, you know, an idea to try and reshape the minds of those that may be misguided. But is there really beyond that much county uh, officials can do to try and prevent these? Well, what you can do, particularly with our working with our faith community, okay, county government itself perhaps has limited reach in that regard, but it is in working with our faith communities. It's working with all aspects of our community and just continuing to send the message and to make sure that, again, our police department is terrific. <clears throat> so Tom Manger is spending a lot of time in this regard, and we will do what we need to do. So I don't have a specific, here's the five-point plan at this moment, but I promise you we're, we're talking about it. Do you think increased criminal penalties? Uh, I don't know what the maximum is for a hate crime, but that, that could serve as a deterrent? Or? And I don't know if that is within our purview or the state's purview in this moment, but we will be looking at everything, okay? Um, with regard to uh, discrimination, uh, what's your message to the county in terms of remarks that uh, some people have told us anecdotally um, they receive based on like just prejudgments, um, what they believe their, their faith is, their immigration status? What's your message to the community on like what's acceptable? You know, you really get back to first principles, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Really, we need to appreciate that there is no them. There is only us. And if we don't act that way, we're in deep trouble. We can't start pointing at some people and saying, you are different and therefore we will treat you differently. We've been down that road. The world has been down that road. <coughs> so. You were in Annapolis on Friday. You met with Senator Ben Cardin. What did he say to you? Well, Senator Ben Cardin and Jamie Raskin and Chris Van Hollen, all three of them, I know, are appalled by what they are seeing. I, I don't want to speak for them. They are capable of speaking for themselves. And what I can say to you is that we, we are all, my colleagues, every elected official that comes from this part of the world, it, it's simply we, we don't know where we are in the morning. We wake up and we read the paper and we say, what is possibly going on? And then we have to find our voice. I have found this to be very difficult, okay? how to give voice to the, 
to the disgust that I feel. And I mean, I have disagreed with presidents, okay? I, I was here for the Nixon era, okay? I have disagreed with presidents, with the Bush presidency. I have never felt what I am feeling today. And I hate feeling this way about the President of the United States of America, the leader of the free world. So. What's different this time? I would never, ever use the word disgust. It's, I, I hate even saying it now. But that is where we are. <clears throat> so. Anybody else? I have a quick question. Um, on the agenda tomorrow, there's an executive session about building security. Is, is there some kind of an issue with a county building and security? Or can you tell us anything about that? I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're called closed session. If I could just follow up on the discuss, could you just repeat for us one more time what specific issues you have? For with uh, the new administration or whatever's happened so far? Like, which specific issues again? <laughs> well, I wish I could, because there are so many. It is the totality of what we are seeing in 10 days. It just makes your head spin and your stomach sick. What makes some people sick might not make other people sick, because you just list one example. No. Thank you. I think we've done this. Okay. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.